Live from Austin, Texas, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2017. Brought to you by Docker and support from its ecosystem partners. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of DockerCon 2017. Happy to welcome to the program uh, one of the keynote speakers from this morning, it's uh, Mark Kavaj, uh, who's the Vice President of Engineering with Oracle, and also joining is Siddharth Agarwal, who's the Vice President of Product Management and Strategy, also with Oracle. You've been on the program a few times. Thanks for joining us again, and Mark, thank you for joining us for the first time on theCUBE. Yeah, absolutely, glad to be here. So, uh, you know, one of the topics we've been talking about this week is kind of the maturation of what goes on in containers. Uh, and the thing that jumped out at me is, you know, we're talking about all the use cases, some of the cool things they're doing. It's like, what applications do I run in containers? Uh, pretty much all applications that I'm running. And I, I've said the stickiest application that's out there today is the one that your company does. You know, you talk about the database, talk about some of your products, you know, Oracle, very well known as to kind of where your applications do. So, you know, on the keynote this morning, I mean, there was actually like a, a pretty good round of applause talking about your announcement so, Mark, let, let, let's start with you as to the, the announcement you made, uh, you know, partnership uh, with Docker and, and what's sure. happening. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, honestly, like, we were, we were really thrilled about it. We were really excited leading up to this. Um, you know, as I say, uh, or as I said, uh, there's, only, there's a few people that know about that database and know about Java. Uh, so we got a lot of people using our apps. No, we, uh, you know, we've been working with Docker for a few months. Um, it's a great partnership. Uh, as, you know, we kind of announced in the, uh, in the partnership, or in the uh, keynote, sorry, you know, we put out basically everything that's important, right? So we started with the Bedrock software that people are using to build all the modern, uh, or all the, you know, the traditional mission critical applications. They're now modernized. So database, web logic, Java, Linux, that's all certified now in Docker. Uh, so it's a big deal for us. We're really happy about it. Right. Uh, it's, just hard. It's, it's interesting to hear. It's like, oh, we've been great partnership for a few months. I mean, you know, application development, you know, is like decades it takes for things to change. T talk about how this fits into just kind of overall strategy, the platforms you build, and what, what's happening at Oracle these days. Yeah, I mean, uh, developers are wanting to leverage the Oracle content in the containerized format so that they could easily, for example, not have to worry about patching, upgrading, et cetera. They could easily move those into production. So what we're doing is we're connecting a lot with developers by uh, having a series of events called Oracle Code Events, where these are free events where we're inviting developers to come. The topics are containers, microservices, DevOps, chatbots, machine learning, and it's not about Oracle delivering all the sessions in, that, in those events. We'd actually, uh, we opened up a call for papers and in three months we got 1,800 submissions for external speakers to deliver sessions. So it's about a 50-50 split between external speakers and internal Oracle speakers talking about all exciting sort of uh, areas uh, in DevOps, in containers, in microservices. And we created a developer portal so developers can go to that portal and from Oracle get access to all the assets that are there. We're creating a um, Oracle Champions program called Oracle Gurus so that people who are really good, who really want to be blogging and talking about content, they can get recognized by Oracle. So we're doing a lot to connect with developers. That's great. Um, and you know, in the keynote you talked about, this is free for test and dev purposes. Mm -hmm. um, Got to ask you about what's probably your favorite question though, is you know, the audience, you know, I looked on social media and it's like, all right, what does this mean when I containerize from a licensing standpoint? We've all seen kind of you know, cloud pricing models, if it's a, you know, Oracle versus if I'm using, say, AWS. So what, what is the licensing impact when we go to a containerized environment? Yeah, no, uh, honestly, it's not any different than we are today, um, but you know, we are, uh, we'll be clarifying it over, over the next couple of months. Okay. Uh, as I said, we'll be iterating a lot with the Docker Store and, and all the software catalog that we put out there. Um, it's, you know, it's, stay tuned for more. And I think the one thing to add is that you know, the key benefit that developers get is, for example, if they go to Docker Hub today, you have 80 different images that different people have put up for WebLogic or for Oracle databases. You don't know which one you want to use, right? But when you come to Docker Store, Oracle has certified the images and put those images up. So now you can get support from Oracle. It's certified by Oracle, and then if you report problems, Oracle knows which images to fix or what, what problems to fix as opposed to some random images yeah, that absolutely. might be there on Docker Hub. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's been a real problem, so yeah. that was yeah. a big deal. So, we, we've seen a lot of diversity as to how users can consume uh, the applications. Maybe give us a little insight as to how things are going in Oracle. I mean, you know, you've, you've got your SaaS, you've got your cloud, uh, you know, we talk about containers here. I mean, it's, you know, rapid change in something that, you know, overall, I mean, the application they're using uh, doesn't drastically change overnight. Uh, consumption models. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, you know, I, honestly, the company's been going through a huge transformation over the last few years, as, as I'm sure you've been told, as I'm sure Siddhartha has told you. Uh, you know, we're we're actually containerizing ourselves internally across the board. Um, almost all the new PaaS software we're building, almost all the new IS software we're building, we're building towards that. Uh, all of our PaaS software, all of our IS software, we're going pay by the hour, uh, fully metered, fully usage-based pricing. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, we want to make sure that people can consume in a subscription-based format and it goes across application development cloud services, across integration cloud services, analytics, management from the cloud, identity, et cetera, everything is on a subscription basis, and we're also enabling this on premise. So that when there's developers who work at financially sensitive companies that have compliance issues, or they work in companies within countries that have data residency issues, and they're unable to benefit from the rapid innovation that's happening in the cloud, so we're actually providing that same subscription model on the, in their data center. So we ship an appliance, they start using the appliance, and we're actually delivering the service on that appliance. So they could do dev test in the public cloud, and then you know do production on-prem, where they're meeting the compliance requirements, data residency requirements. And Oracle is managing that environment. You're not buying the appliance, you're actually buying the service, just as you were buying it in the public cloud. And the pricing is identical. And the pricing is identical between public cloud and what you get delivered as public cloud in your data center. All right. Yes. Uh, one of the things, you know, those of us that watch Oracle for a long time, you know, people have the perception of what Oracle is. Mm. Um, I've seen a number of, you know, really good people that I know Oracle's hired over the last few years. Uh, Mark, I mean, you were called, uh, you know, one of those rock star developers. You've got a really good pedigree uh, from, from some of the previous clouds. Maybe give us a little insight as to what you see from an engineering culture, you know, architecturally standpoint. You know, is this the Oracle that when you joined Oracle, is it what you expected? You know, what, 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 what's it really like inside? Yeah, no, I, honestly, like, as, as I said, Really, the company is changing across the board a lot faster than people realize, um, and that's true for both, uh, you know, the, the the rock stars that were already in the company and the rock stars that are coming into the company now. Um, you know, we've we, you've you've interviewed the Seattle team before about some of the cloud up there. Uh, I mean, we've brought in several hundred people from outside companies from you know really strong pedigrees, right? Google's, Amazon's, Microsoft's, etc. We've done a ton of hiring in the Bay Area. We've brought in a lot of startup talent. Uh, we've done, you know, there's been, of course, a few acquisitions. We bring in really solid teams. Uh, and then, honestly, just the culture itself is changing. Uh, really, the, you know, the, the transformation to a cloud company is, uh, it actually it impacts everything, right? It impacts the way you do support, it impacts the way you do development, it impacts the way you do uh, operations, it impacts everything, so. Well, I think, uh, you know, if you think about it, we're going from a company that built airplanes and sold those airplanes to others, for example, Boeing selling airplanes to, uh, Air France, et cetera, to actually becoming an airline, where you're now not just building the airplane, you're actually flying the airplane, operating the airplane. So in the development and engineering organizations, the engineers are understanding that they need to understand what the impact is on operations of what they're releasing. They can't say, oh, send me the log files or log a ticket, because by that time it's affected many people. So one, they have to create transparency into what's happening in production in real time, to be able to respond and react to that in real time. And the other thing that is a change in culture, both in engineering and actually across the board, including in sales, is customer success. In cloud, people expect to get value in three months, four months, six months, et cetera. So having a very significant focus on ensuring customer success within three to four months, right? Then they will renew their subscriptions, they will continue working with us. So there's actually a very significant change in culture that's happening. And the other thing is, we're not just going after the large enterprises that used to be the bread and butter for Oracle, but now we also have small, medium businesses, startups, et cetera, saying, hey, if I don't have to worry about installing, managing, configuring Oracle databases or Oracle content, I can just go use the capabilities that are being provided by uh, Oracle and pay for it as a subscription. And so, we're really shooting towards developers realizing that the Oracle Cloud Platform is a open, modern, easy platform. Open because they have a choice of programming languages, Java, SE, PHP, Ruby. Open in terms of database choices, not just the Oracle database, but MySQL, Cassandra, MongoDB, uh, and uh, Hadoop clusters. 
an open in terms of choice of deployment shapes, right? Where you can have VMs, you can have bare metal, you can have containers, or you could have uh, serverless computing. Yeah. Uh you brought up speed, mm -hmm. you know, the, the pace of change is just phenomenal. I think, think about the traditional kind of software life cycles uh, mm -hmm. versus, you know, where, where Docker is today. I mean, it used to go from like an 18 month down to six weeks. So, kind of a two part question. How are you guys internally managing that pace of change and how are you helping your customers you know, manage that pace of change. I look, you know, Docker has the CE and the EE, so you know, you want to be more bleeding edge, everything else, or do you want something uh, that's a little more stable? How, how do you guys view it internally and externally? Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. Um, certainly internally, we're, you know, we're as bleeding edge as, uh, we, just, we just talked about this a second ago. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're moving fast, we're shipping software every day. Um, you know, the interesting thing I find is actually customers are going through the same transformation. And most people don't realize when they go to microservices, actually it's a big organizational change, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it changes the way that you have to structure your teams, it changes the way they communicate with each other. Uh, and so honestly, you know, a huge part, you know, to the previous question, a huge part of this for us is we need to be doing this because our customers are doing it too, right? So we need to have empathy. Uh, so we're doing that. Well, and, and I think um, in terms of speed, uh, you know, previously Oracle might release on-prem software once every 12, 18, 24 months. Yeah. Now I'll give you the example of the integration cloud service. We've had four releases of it, four to five releases of it within a year. So, you know, the rate at which we're actually getting the releases out, getting the content out, means that customers are getting innovation much faster. And also what we're doing is we're taking input from customers on the releases that have happened, so we're actually prioritizing the input that we're getting plus the roadmaps that we've set up to say, hey, what should we be working on next? So our roadmaps are actually changing in flight. So it's not like you set the roadmap for the next nine months or 12 months, but you're actually saying, hey, but this is the input we got and we need to deliver faster, you know, uh, or we need to deliver a different set of uh, capabilities within that same time frame. And I think customers are now getting used to the fact that if they didn't have to get the new uh, build, install the build, manage, configure, make changes, et cetera, they're saying, I just got the new capabilities. My application still works, and now if I want to use that capabilities, I can start leveraging it, right? So for example, orchestration was added to the integration cloud service. They didn't have to do anything to the existing integrations, but now they could use orchestration for more complex integrations if they wanted. Yeah, I uh, want to give you both a, a final word on this. Either, you know, conversation you've had with you know, a customer or partner or you know, key takeaway you want to have people beyond what we've covered already, Mark? Yeah, no, uh, you know, honestly, I, I really said it this morning in the keynote where uh, we really are focused on developers. Developers really are driving decisions these days. We know that. Uh, this announcement from us at Docker was the first of many things you're going to see. Uh, we're absolutely committed, so uh, stay yeah. tuned for more. Yeah, one more developer and we'll, 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 we'll oh, go yeah, follow yeah, up Oh yeah, you worry so. about that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So well, I think that, you know, uh, what we've heard is developers are surprised when they find out the capabilities we have to help them build microservices, container-based applications. Being able to have a runtime for microservices, being able to have API management for all the APIs associated with microservices, being able to have a monitoring management infrastructure from the cloud so they don't have to install it, and having a CI CD pipeline, all provided to them as a service in the cloud, wonderful. That's the feedback that we've gotten for those who've uh, come and tried the Oracle Cloud Platform. Siddharth, Mark, thank you so much for joining us, giving the update. Congratulations on the announcement today. I know a lot of people will be checking out the Docker store to understand that is, uh, yeah. Well, we'll have to talk some time about kind of the enterprise app store in general and where, where, where these all live. But uh, we'll be back with more coverage here. You're watching theCUBE.